Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gunpowder and Freedom. So, all of my drywall work is done. Um, I couldn't really complete, I couldn't really film that. Uh, just language was a little bit too much. Um, as I told you guys before, I hate it, but I can do it. So I don't really want to pay somebody to do it. Now that will be completely different at the new house. I'm going to sub that out with a smile on my face. Um, but for here, for this house, I can do it. So I will do it. Um, doesn't mean I like it though, but it is all done. Now this is the bathroom. Obviously this wall's smooth. That's all nice and smooth. Uh, we don't really have any hard lines. Uh, I got my corner all patched up. Follow me out here. Sorry about this area. It's a little bit of a mess while we're under construction. Uh, I did get this area textured and it was one of those things that I did have to figure out how to do. Uh, now you can see down here, uh, it is just kind of, uh, I don't know what that finish is called, but to mimic it, all I did was kind of cover this whole area in a very thin layer of drywall mud. Yes, very thin, because if you put drywall mud on too thick, it will crack when it dries. So we went with a really thin layer of drywall mud. And then I just took my uh, six inch drywall blade, kind of swirled it around and roughed it up. And then I did the same thing with my two inch blade. Um, and then once it kind of dried a little bit, I took my eight inch uh, drywall blade and just kind of knocked all the high spots down. So that way, I'll see if you guys can see it. You kind of get these little swirl marks that are somewhat flat. And uh, like I said, it kind of mimics this. It might not be perfect, but to me it matches enough to paint it. And uh, I don't think it'll ever get questioned. So now there are a few spots in the house that I went around and just touched up some drywall. So these are the two main areas that I'm going to be filming, as well as work out in the garage. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, but for right now, I need to get all this stuff primered. Uh, so then maybe... Later tonight, we can get our first coat of paint on everything. So, off to painting. Alright, primer's on. Now we just wait for it to dry so we can have the color. Okay, the first coat of paint has been applied to both walls, uh, different colors, which kind of makes the pain. Have to dirty two sets of, I guess, two different brushes and two rollers. Um, now I need to wait for that stuff to dry. I need to touch up the ceiling. Um, but I figured, hey, 
this shouldn't take too long. While I have a minute, why don't I come out and mount this nice 125 amp uh, sub panel that I got for out here. And uh, I said, yeah, this will be real awesome. It'll get real quick. I'll throw a board back there. Oh, wait. Come on now. Come on. Oh, I should have double checked my measurements before I put that stud in because it's kind of, I mean, I, I'll make it work. Uh, that's one of our more common phrases nowadays is make it, make it work. Um, but it's not really that simple as chopping out this stud here because as you guys remember, this was the, one of the studs I put in to replace that window. So that nice new drywall I put in is all screwed right down here. So it's not like I can just sawzall off these nails and these nails and have that stud pop right out. So what I am going to do is I am going to make my marks. Um, now, one of the things that my electrician friend Mel told me is that the top breaker cannot exceed six feet in height. He said, so pull a number, make your six foot mark, and then put the box where it's comfortable. Uh, as long as that top breaker is not above that, you are golden. Uh, I was reading online the bottom breaker has to be above like three or four feet. So regardless with this size uh, sub service panel, we should be, you know, right as rain for, for that. Um, uh, I'll just have to come in, make my marks where I want it, and then just kind of notch this two by four out uh, to my proper depth. Uh, we want the drywall to come flush with the top of this. So I need to measure this distance here, subtract 5 eighths because this is a garage. It does need 5 eighths drywall per code. Um, and then uh, that will be my distance. I need to cut that two by four back. However, I don't really have time right now. So this might get put on the docket for tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, so now, provided this fits, which it does, oh, I've been waiting for this moment all day. Let's just run inside and check something real quick. This will make sense in one second. Okay. No damage to my nice new drywall. Hey dad, remember that conversation we had? Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So to bring you guys up to speed now, dad, you remember the, the conversation we just had? Okay. So bringing everybody up to speed here, uh, I was telling my dad about this little dilemma where I, you know, mismeasured. I wasn't paying attention to my measurements. I didn't double check my measurements. And he was saying, oh, yeah, it sounds like uh, your solution there. You're just going to create a lot more damage to your nice new drywall. Why don't you just pop those screws out, you know, move that board over, you know, you're going to damage your drywall if you try doing that. Well, I told him, Dad, if you're right, I will get on camera and say, hey, my dad was right. Uh, I damaged my drywall. I should have listened to him, but I was right. So dad, there's more than one way to skin a cat, man. Uh, notching that out worked perfect. The drywall inside is perfectly fine. Um, yeah, maybe you should start taking some advice from me. If I would have did it that way, would have ended up costing myself uh, a lot of extra time there. But I'm able to mount that box now. I can throw another two by four right on the side and regain my structural support. <sighs> it's the small victories in life.
Okay, so fast forward to Christmas Eve. My panel box is mounted and I have my level around here somewhere, but it's nice and level, nice and plumb. So we are good to go ahead and start putting some knockouts in and running my power feeding, my power feed to the appropriate spots. I'm gonna go ahead and get a 14 gauge wire pulled for my power for my light switches, as well as I threw in an outlet box here, uh, run power to that and then run that power from here up the wall across my uh, joists, floor joists, whatever you want to call them, rafters, um, to my power here. That'll feed all the way down to there. I'm going to break it there and then we'll run power um, up and over feeding the power supply over there. Um, yeah, so I only have a little bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and get the camera set up on time lapse and get going. Okay, so I am definitely making some good progress with this electrical. Uh, now it is getting pretty dark out, so I'll do my best to show you guys what I have going on. Uh, we have three home runs so far run into this uh, sub panel. Uh, this one here runs, it's gonna run from its own breaker, uh, hitting this first outlet. It goes up, over in the ceiling, down to that outlet, and then all of these outlets on this wall are powered. Um, I broke the run after this outlet. So from this corner all the way down and that single outlet by the sub panel are on its own home run. Um, the other home run goes up into these rafters here, across, down, hits this outlet and from there I have this outlet wrapping around that wall, my office space here, TV, and uh, this outlet over here. Um, I wanted to do it that way because with this being a workbench, my work area here, I wanted to make sure that if I ever have a miter saw running or something or a uh, you know corded power saw, something that draws a whole lot of amperage, um, I wanted it to be separate from my computer and everything because if it gets too much of a surge, 
and trips a breaker, trips an outlet, whatever. I wanted to make sure my computer was gonna be safe. That way if I'm working on a project or something, I don't lose any unsafe project. Um, yeah, so half of the outlets are gonna be on one breaker, the other half are gonna be on another breaker. Um, then I ran a home run, again, from that box all the way up here, down, hitting my exterior outlet right here. I have power going in, and all of my outlet power, we are running it in 12-2, that is 12 gauge wire and two uh, common wire, I believe, uh, current wires, whatever. Uh, then I have this 14 gauge wire. I'm going to pick up power to that since, you know, I think it's kind of not really, I, I think it's a little bit unnecessary to just have one outlet on its own home run. I'm going to pick up power with my 14 gauge wire, run it up through there and hit this light switch box that I just put in there so that I can have some lighting up in that attic. Now I still need to run the wiring from my switch to my light fixtures up there. That'll be for another day. Um, so right now, all of my outlets are, you know, hypothetically, if we had power to that panel, um, I could power all of my outlets. Uh, the last thing that I, well, the, I'm sorry, the last two things that I need to do wiring wise are I need to run a wire from, again, this panel. Uh, all of the lights are gonna be on one circuit. So I'm gonna run a home run from this panel up into there, come down. Actually, I might even just go through the studs. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go through the studs to this light switch box here. Now remember that switch box controls these two sconce lights outside, as well as that motion sensor camera light up there. Then from there, we're gonna run our power up around the door, down inside here to our three-way switch, which is going to power all of these lights in the parking bay. Then we'll run uh, power from that box through this wall, right down here, around this corner, up into this light switch box. Uh, from there, we have power going to these lights here in the working area, another three-way switch to the parking area, um, the sconce lights outside, and then um, we have power going from there up around the door to this light switch box here, which this one will have the motion uh, security camera light here as well as another light up here shining towards the uh, woodshed. So one more home run with a couple stops left to do. Um, and then I need to go around and put in pigtails and all of the outlet boxes, but frankly, um, it's getting dark and I'm just really not in the mood to be working. We had um, some pretty unfortunate news events on Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'll see you guys tomorrow.